awareness on moths okay, and to uh, discuss the moth diversity and to document the moth diversity in the country. So we have been uh, the, doing it for the uh, past few years. Okay. So actually it is the National Moth Week is celebrating its 10th anniversary this year. And this year in India we had got, I mean, the overwhelming response because we have uh, more than a thousand plus registration uh, only on the iNaturalist okay. and the and lot of events are conducting across the uh, country and the at various levels the regional level and also at national level so uh, the uh, uh, moths are uh, very diverse and they have a, a I mean a big role in the ecosystem so but uh, we have I mean only limited knowledge on about moths so this is we are taking this opportunity to spread awareness regarding the moths and also we are at the uh, asking the people to uh, document and uh, the uh, report this moth uh, the sightings in the some of the cities and science forums yeah. so the iNaturalist is one of the biggest citizen science forum and similarly this year the uh, Indian biodiversity portal and in, in most of India groups are also I mean, are the partners of this year's national motive. So the response is so far good so in from India actually during the I mean, We, okay, so I'm audible, I think. Okay. So also we are having a good number of records in the in the modes of India also. So the actual numbers may get uh, some more time to uh, get uh, the consolidated number. But uh, uh, what we can see is so far it is the best year for the national mode. So in this uh, context, actually we were uh, the, the national mode week, the Kerala uh, chapter is actually uh, conducting few event so we have conducted uh, two talks already and this is the third talk in this series so today mm, the mm, mahesh will be talking on the uh, introduction to major moth families yeah. so uh, uh, as we know it is uh, slightly difficult to identify the moths yeah, and due to its diversity and the a lack of uh, resources okay so the mahesh will be uh, taking through the some of the important fa families and some of the uh, basic characteristics of moths okay after giving some introduction on, uh, on the moths okay. so the mahesh is a moth enthusiast okay. so i mean he is uh, uh, studying his msc in botany in maharaja's uh, college in the uh, ernakulam kerala and yes i mean the he has developed his interest in moths in the last few years and he is very active in the participating in various the moth related activities on different social media platforms okay. and he has got uh, some uh, good uh, idea about the moth classification all that so and the we uh, welcome all the participants to this uh, particular uh, talk and i uh, request everybody to please uh, the uh, switch off your video as well as your audio during the talk. So if you are having any questions, we'll take at the end of the session. Also, you can put the questions in the chat box. So we'll be taking at the end, end of the session. Okay. So now I invite Mahesh to, to start the talk. So uh, welcome Mahesh, you can continue now. Hello, thank you, sir. Is it I'm audible? Oh, yeah. yeah, you are audible. Okay, good evening, start. everyone. Is Ram audible? Hello? Yes, Hello? sir. Yes, yes, you are audible. Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm, I'm here just giving an, uh, giving an introduction to Moth family. As we know that uh, there are about 128 families and about uh, 160,000 species are distributed in Moth. 
uh, I'm here only saying the common uh, 20, uh, common 19 mode family that we can see here commonly. Uh, by looking at uh, uh, that mode, uh, comparing to butterfly, in Kerala, we have about uh, 320 butterflies uh, there will be. Uh, uh, but when we look to modes of Kerala, there will be more than 1,200 uh, species, uh, including if, you, if there's a lack of studies are there. So I'm giving you just a basic introduction to moth characters and uh, their common families and some conservation aspects. As uh, that everyone know the taxonomic position as an key important features. While looking that everyone knows the phylum Arthropoda and class Exapoda, it belongs. Uh, the order Lepidoptera, it includes the butterflies and moth. The Lepidoptera is divided into Rapalocera and Atrocera. Rapalocera is a butterfly uh, that we can easily distinguish as a club horned insects. And uh, Atrocera, that where moth belongs, it has variously horned insects. Uh, that moth uh, belong to 128 uh, families and about 160,000 species. And Already there will be about 11 or 15, 11 to 15 uh, families are already extinct now. And there are about, uh, about uh, over 12,000 species has been already uh, recorded in India. But if you are, if you are, a, if you are looking, including the micro lepidoptera, and if you have the strong database, uh, the count will be really more than 150,000 species where there will be in India. Uh, as an evolution, while looking in the evolution, um, as a moth has a great ecological role and a great ecological significance in nature. Uh, first, we thought, Evan, I thought that uh, butterfly, we know that, uh, that a butterfly has co evolved with the angio, uh, angiosperms, and that as an anti defense uh, uh, with the uh, vocal organ system. Uh, but uh, we thought that a uh, bat has evolved from 150 million years ago. But uh, after a, an, a detailed evolutionary study, recently it was discovered that. Uh, moth was evolved about uh, 300 million years ago. Moth has evolved about 300 million years ago, and uh, more than uh, in the Carboniferous period. And uh, it was not that like uh, it was co-evolved with the bat, and it's not uh, adapted from the anti-bat defense method. Uh, it has before that. Uh, so we know that Lepidoptera play key may, uh, key roles in many biological systems. Our butterflies are hypothesized to have evolved with the flowering plants. And most are thought to gain anti bat defense in response to echolocation predatory bats. Uh, and they thought that it, uh, most are evolved about in 150 million years ago. Uh, as a, but, uh, but after a transcriptively dated evolutionary tree of Lepidoptera that recently studied, uh, that shows that, it, uh, that our hypothesis is wrong. And most has evolved much before that. And it was uh, present in, even in a carboniferous period about some 300 million years ago and began to diversify with angiosperms. While looking at the morphology, we can see that uh, the coastal region and uh, iron wing region, uh, the coastal region, uh, mostly the most rest in a player covering the iron wing region. But for the taxonomical care features and identification of the species level, we need to look out the iron wing regions also. And the costa, coastal regions are an important uh, characteristic features for identifying the species. And here is a looking at antenna. There are different types of antenna that we can see uh, than, uh, other than by in butterfly only we can see only two, there are two types. And there is a, an orbicular spot and would appear here. And there has been a thorax and abdomen that are other like in other lepidoptera also. While looking at the venation, as venation is very important uh, because uh, the classification is basically mostly depending on the venation and the coastal region, apex region, thermon, dorsum region are really important uh, for looking for identifying the class uh, species level or the classification species. While we have the butterflies, uh, while looking at the antenna, you have two type of um, an antennas. But most uh, there are uh, there are so many type of antenna. I am here only uh, presenting only three types. Yes, the bipectinate and pectinate serrated. Our antennas. Uh, while looking at that, we know that mostly nocturnal, but there are also, also exceptional cases like uh, some of them are daylight, the day flying mode, some are a crepuscular time. It's, uh, there are also exceptional cases. Uh, they accept the cryptic coloration 
uh, that the moths are most uh, more colorful than uh, colorful than the butterflies that exhibit antennas are mostly feathery or thread like the most exhibit rest in uh, different method their different positions are there but uh, i am here only saying the common uh, resting form the like very form planet form and tactic form the caterpillars may have a irritating hairs of spine uh, while it's not like a key features to distinguish from the butterflies to move that uh, most have uh, airy caterpillar there are also exceptional cases uh, but mostly we can say uh, that caterpillars of moth have more airs and it may have irritating air spines also uh, they also have pupate mostly inside cocoons so the most also the moth mostly use a pupate inside the cocoon unlike uh, butterflies they feed on plants and animal fluids not only most they only feed some nectars or like they feed uh, so many things uh, that we will go and eggs are laid in single or in groups there are several type of egg lay uh, according to family pattern uh, some may lay, a lay eggs in a single uh, some in cluster some may lay egg and form uh, some gelatinous material to cover them the caterpillars are plant eating and as well as insect eating are also there present uh, as we know that commonly that uh, butterflies and most caterpillars eat uh, plants but there are also insectivorous caterpillars that, that we can see some geometry uh, a caterpillar that are excellently catching the fly is uh, flies even in, in a fly and uh, eating them there is a common resting position uh, it's a planiform position here is a uh, one shown in geometry but we cannot say into family level by looking it's a resting position uh, it's a uh, geometry is a planiform and here one is a tectiform here the species shown as an belong to nolidae family there is another one as a veliform uh, that's here is a geometry also that i am say that uh, we cannot say family uh, looking the resting position that we can see here that planiform in uh, here these two both are geometry belong it belongs to geometry family eyes the, there are different different structure and different size of eyes can be seen in the worm moth and just you are saying that the large more eyes are can be mostly seen in off moth belong to spingidae family that we can here see here and uh, smaller are cranpidae and also micro lepidoptera groups have also small eyes and here is a noctids uh, that have a hairy structure in between eyes in between those eyes the proboscis is really an a uh, uh, wonderful character that can be seen is uh, that moths have a long proboscis that uh, comparing to any other uh, butterfly that we can see the comparing to the whole size of an orc moth that shown here have a long such a long proboscis that have a special adaptation uh, that uh, the there are some uh, that almost does not have any proboscis that are also exceptional cases but most that have a proboscis uh, it can be into the hawk moth have uh, spingidae family groups have a proboscis uh, there are important features of for pollinating they are very important really important pollinators and they are specific to some plant and specific to some structure there are there are also some that orchid uh, wild orchid and wild plant that have a really long two plaque structure that need a long proboscis to to get the nectar so uh, only uh, so only, only these moths can uh, get uh, to that much deep uh, by using this long long proboscis so they are pollination uh, specific the most uh, into the this moths make a liquid feeder some have a strong proboscis which could pierce and suck as in a box some can use a proboscis as well for piercing also the proboscis absent in several families like euphrotidae there are also some other families that are uh, that are does not have a proboscis that the proboscis does not mean that we can see that they don't feed on adult stage which means that they reserve energy from their caterpillar stage itself and they don't there is not also pollinate the long proboscis is found found in uh, some species of orc moth is a labial palps is also a structure that can be seen in a region most of two labial palps airy and scale at the base there is uh, this one is a labial palps the proceeding forward and upward the labial palps are considered as more modified mouth parts and prominent in some species uh, this be the picture i am shown here is an eudocima species and i come eripidae uh, family uh, that's a uh, um, the labial palps are for the sensory function 
thorax uh, is another structure that I am saying. It'd be a six legs and two pairs of wings. That other we can we know that in every Lepidoptera like in butterfly also have a six legs and two pairs of wings. Moth in uh, thorax region, moth also have ears at the end of thorax. It depends. Uh, some may have uh, some may have in a uh, no, first or th third segment they produce an organ called tympal tympal region. Uh, the tympal region have a specific function like they emit sound that can take the ultrasound, uh, ultrasonic sound waves given up by the insectivorous bats. Insectivorous bats. This uh, click, uh, the sound produced by the tympal region will uh, will clear, will uh, jam the ultrasonic sound that emitted by bat also. And it's a pretty it is an adaptation method. Uh, it's also a, for a defensive me defense mechanism. And also some uh, more uh, produce a click sound like sound. Uh, by the tympan region to show it's a dis uh, distasteful moth, like such as a tiger moth. Wings that we know that more than two pair of wings. Uh, the upper pair is called four wings, and the second, uh, the pair, a lower pair is called iron wing region. And the same female have no wing. There are also females that have no wing. Uh, without without wing uh, wings, uh, like limandria species, that commonly we can say they are born without wings. Now some males have specialized cells called anthropodian structure that can be seen in the following region or in the region. Uh, that, are the, that for the, it can be seen in male uh, that for their mating purpose and they emit the pheromones and influence the courtship. Wing venation is a very important feature for the classification. It's mainly based on the wing venation and for the identification of species. The feeding that we commonly note that uh, Lepidoptera feeds on uh, nectar nectars and uh, common uh, but there are also so many uh, exceptional cases uh, in here uh, we can see in moth there are also most feed on nectars but some feed on dead decaying plants or animals there's some plant nectar uh, eat on uh, feeds on their uh, decaying plants and animal uh, that also we uh, that also we can see in black rice or tony rice and butterflies also but we can here see also in most also that behavior there are also fruit piercing moth that uh, eurozima species that uh, appears a fruit like a uh, pomegranate grapes and uh, they also feed on them. There are other death at oak uh, moth that we can see here, right there below, that raid the honey bees, that honey beehives, and they, 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 they take their food also. And some species are feed on animals and blood and tears. There are also so many cases that uh, we can see the moth on the body of the cattle cattle uh, that they suck their fluids and uh, blood also there are so many uh, feeding uh, pattern as show, uh, seen in behavior more the breeding biology in most uh, in most species they may seek the female to mate with her and they like fertilize eggs in some species the reproduction is carried out without mating like the parthenogenesis uh, that in limantrius, example, in limantrius species that we can see when female emerge uh, from the XVV, then they will lay egg. They, do, they don't need to mate uh, for laying egg. There are also exceptional cases like that. There are four separate stages like in butterfly, that egg stage followed by caterpillar or larvae stage and the pupa and other stage. The picture shown is a family, it's a Cidae family, but that Melitia species mating. The egg, uh, that's a single egg laid by the macroclosum uh, belonging to Sphingida family. Here is another cluster like egg uh, that is shown in uh, several families like a Cosidae or Laripidae. The caterpillar. By looking at the caterpillar, uh, we can identify, uh, we can easily distinguish the family level. While here we can see that the anal tail region in the caterpillar that shows it belongs to Sphingidae family of moth. There are also several, uh, like the entry abdominal segments, uh, like prolex, many adaptation methods. While we can see the true legs are mostly here, we can see them developed, highly developed here. But lacking the below, the herbida caterpillar, asota carici, the pro, true legs are, are there, and prolex are more than comparing to this one. Uh, belong to each family, the caterpillar. Uh, Morphology characters are also changed. The pupae of the different family I am shown here. As so the first one is uh, belonging to Spingidae family, Macroglossum species, and second one is Noctidae family, Epistim, Araratrix, and third one is Nolidae, 
uh, which one is commonly elegema. As a fourth one is er, uh, belong to family Eribidae. Here they are, we are looking at the family uh, Sphingidae. They have a pat behavior like they be, they become pupae in the below the soil. Mostly they below the soil. They because they after a fully grown adult caterpillars they grow they go down to the of the plant and they dig some in you know, dig in the soil and to become pupae. While in the Noctidae. Um, Nolidae uh, Noctidae also lay egg, uh, lay, become pupae on the soil surface. Uh, but uh, Nolidae and Eribidae that, uh, and Crampidae, other species, uh, they pupae on the rolling leaves or uh, curled leaves. There are also some Cosidae uh, uh, pupae that uh, may pupae on the, become pupae on the inside the bark, inside tree bark. That's adult stage I'm showing is. Uh, Salogramma, uh, first one, Orkmoth, Fingidae family, uh, second one, Crambidae family here, and third one, Noctidae family. Defense mechanism. There are so many defense mechanisms, as uh, Unikrishna had also talked in, in the last, uh, in your last talk about defense, uh, camouflage, camouflage of a most, uh, but there is also a defense mechanism, but I am saying here is a, some other defense mechanism, that uh, most uh, that stem boring cosids remain inside tree box. That is a defense mechanism that uh, the caterpillars cannot be seen outside of a cosida family. They are, will be mostly in the inside the tree box, and uh, like a tree leaf miners remain reef miners caterpillar like a crambidate or fissidae. Uh, they remain between the upper and the lower leaf surface that they cannot be easily catched. There are also some like a uh, spingidae group. The that they will create a green fluid in defense. If we go, if we go to touch them, they will, they will bow the head and uh, emit the green fluid as a defense mechanism. The caterpillar or mimic objects or other organisms in the wild. There are so many mimicking uh, that also uh, mimic uh, according to nature, like twig-like or leaf-like uh, structures. The geometry crab caterpillar that resemble twigs, while not to mostly resembles the dry leaves. The bat worms construct portable bags. Uh, does not uh, the case that will be on the caterpillar. There are some caterpillars are mimicking eye spots similar to animals. That we, here we can see in a spingiri group that showing it as a look like a snakes, but it's a caterpillar. Here we can see the geometry changing the color according to the background or according to their habitat. Here is a cosidae according to bot the moth watching there are several method uh, or a uh, method that used for watching the moth but i am here uh, I'm, but i am saying is a, a light sheet method light sheet is a less restrictive method, uh, method that we can use but that we need what we need is an a 225 watt mercury vapor lamp and a lavoy sheet of cloth that uh, thing that we you we should careful is that after doing a, your more thing uh, that we you should uh, release the all the that you are you have to be sure that all the moth are at, off, uh, get up from the screen or if you are to is it's not gone you are it's your duty to release them and uh, remove them or it may uh, it may cause an ample to them then other there also a best result can be seen during monsoon season especially no moon days and after uh, and also it's better to watch after rainy days keep watching from 7 pm to 5 am uh, that it can be seen, uh, um, it, it has a time that will be mostly Saturday it can be seen uh, during early morning, early morning, like uh, 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. Like it's an uh, example of an outline sheet is present. Now I am going to just briefly explain the common moth families I uh, can we can see here. That family Saturday. It's a that a very common, very common family uh, because of its huge size and a colorful uh, attraction that everyone knows. It's a uh, Saturnidae. It's a one of their large size and beauty. It has a one like uh, it has the sorry. It has a thousand eight hundred species from which forty are from India. It's a cosmopolitan distribution. There's a widely distributed. Uh, it can be seen in everywhere. Here we can see also that proboscis is mostly absent. That means that it does not feed, that uh, it, it gives energy from the caterpillar stage. There are also uh, that parthenogenesis can also be seen in this family, that reproduction of fertile eggs without mating, and sometimes as can record in this family. That caterpillar has a defense mechanism like when they alarmed, they regretted a green fluid as a defense mechanism. 
there are also can some caterpillars that cause poison like example circular trifenestra here we can see is attacus tacro taprobanilus lesser atlas moth its distribution lies western ghats and sri lanka region it is not the largest moth uh, a largest moth uh, seen in india is attacus atlas uh, that we can see in the northeast region that uh, we can see that that apex region of the forewing avianica this like structure is also a defense mechanism to uh, to alarm the predators look like snake like structure that's next one is andrea militia it's a uh, used for seri uh, silk culture and its cocoons are used for the production of silk it's also one of the saturnidae that we can see here in kerala then another one is actia silin that we can see here uh, uh, the tail long tail like structure that's uh, used for for the hijacking the sonar the sonar wave that emitted by bat to wrong the their the location and uh, to escape from the predators another one actius carolina before it was thought as an actius mina a uh, malaysian lona moth but recent studies uh, in kanagra in 2020 says it uh, becomes to actius carolina no species this also can be seen in yala but uh, this are seen in high altitude regions and uh, having good ecosystem the lovipus species that are called an uh, emperor moth and living as a lovipus species because for is a uh, species level identification need genital section or uh, or better study of the distribution mostly seen here is a lovipus kind mystery so another family common family that uh, we are um, you are saying is a family cicidae family cicidae or they are it will mostly look like an wasp and bees so we don't think it's an a moth but uh, it's a moth Uh, this is a small family comprises about thousand species over worldwide, which more than fifty are found in India. And Dina are often curved. That's an identification feature of this family. That and Dina shows a curved and Dina and the swollen towards the tips. The phenomenon of tough scales and spines. That's a like a small airy hairs and scales like structure. And adult mimics wasp and bees. They cannot be seen in the light screen. The that they are not uh, attracted by light. Their skin is it can be seen in morn, morning or diurnal. The caterpillars have a five pairs of reduced prowl legs. It's an important character for this identification. But the yeah, but seeing is caterpillar is a uh, difficult because it's mostly seen inside the stems, inside the leaves. Like they are stem borers, root borers, and wood borers. Found in woody shrub and vines. Developmental time is long. For the fully developed, it takes long time. The pupation occurs within the tunnel constructed in oast plant or silk lined tunnels in soil. That it may it mostly pupate inside the soil. Here, what I am showing is that the cicidae is a meritorious species for the species level identification. Uh, the section is needed. And this look like a, that we can see is a, look like a bee or a like structure. That here we can see then uh, antenna. That's the important identification of this family. That's a curved wing, a curved tip-like structure, and we are their ex, their legs have an airy and tough-like structure that we can see here, the long hairs and tough. Then another common family, family Calodilidae, they're called butterfly moth because its resting position and looks like a butterfly, and they are seen in mostly crepuscular or day flying time. But uh, even if it looks like a butterfly, we can easily distinguish by looking its antenna. We can easily distinguish by its antenna because its antenna are thread-like structure, not uh, like other antenna structure that seen in butterflies. About one hundred two species are uh, from not from world, and that six species are from India. They show both day-like and nocturnal behavior. They are used exclusively on phone. They cannot they cannot also be seen thus known on screens. Another family family Cocidae. Uh, there are about 670 species worldwide and uh, 23 are known from india they're seen in mixed forest habitat adults are non feeders and uh, nocturnal and visit lights that means that adults just not have any proboscis and they are nocturnal and visit lights that they also may require 
one to four years to complete their life, complete uh, to fully develop their capital stage. It means that it takes long time uh, that uh, any other than any lepidoptera to complete this life cycle. And then caterpillar are often disposed by wind. It's another adaptation that uh, because the caterpillar are more uh, more uh, army like army that it will be there more uh, it will be large groups. It will be disposed by wind. Uh, in different uh, location to for uh, feed more fresh leaves, and there are other also that uh, other character that pupates inside the tree trunk, the Cocidae family that they pupate inside the tree trunk, or uh, like uh, coffee, tea, and cocoa are the host plants that uh, they prefer. And there are also other characters that eggs the eggs they are laid in in a tree crevices covered with a glutinous secretion. It's an uh, method that dwell from their predators. And due to the internal feeding habitat of certain caterpillars, considered it as a micro mode. There are micro and macro lepidoptera. Uh, that my um, that micro are like uh, Cranthidae, Tortoisidae, uh, Lecithocidae, Cosmopteridae. There are the other families. Uh, Cosidae is a lar even large size, about a uh, more than seven centimeter. But we place it in uh, in the micro lepidoptera because of their feeding habitat, because of their internal feeding habit of their caterpillars. Here is a example, common ecosyde that we can see in here. Silutus persona and polyphagus coffee, commonly called as coffee, cup, and a moth. That family Crambidae, this is one of the largest family Crambidae. There are approximately 11,000 species as described from world ago. That we can see that the, the forest, they are mostly rust with four wings covering the, uh, that, uh, four wing covering the hind wing region. But their hind wing markings are really important for the identification of species. And we can we know that after any good rainy season uh, in, your, in our garden, we can see that our leaves are rolled, like uh, rolled or uh, structure that we can see that are made mostly by the cranberry. Like uh, we can see here, the common cat uh, common uh, caterpillar here, we can see that caterpillars are typically stem borders, leaf rollers, and leaf miners. There are also special. Uh, and a character that we can see in Crambidae are aquatic Crambidae. There are some family called as Acentropinae that belong. Uh, that, uh, that we can see caterpillars found in us that um, standing or slow moving water lag. They lack gills. Uh, they mostly feed on the diatoms and small uh, small insects and algae also. It's only, it's only the caterpillar that we can see having an aquatic behavior or in that can be seen in aquatic region. The species that can be found in a fast flowing waters or rocks or wet swimmers. They have they have gills and feed on algae and diatoms. Their caterpillar have aquatic feeder with gills or pair of long ears at the tail end. That's an uh, distinction char character that can be identified. That character uh, that caterpillars have any long ears at the tail end. That mostly other cater more caterpillars of more that we can see in the uh, on trees or bark. But here we can see. One as a on subfamily of Ascentropinae, caterpillars are in water or aquatic region. Here is a one caterpillar, uh, so sorry, here is a one an adult Crambidae that here is clearly showing that it's a four wing is covering hind wing region. That uh, that we does, we can't see any hind wing markings or hind wing region to identify. Uh, here is a common one uh, that we call Agathos ostendalis. Commonly called as a coral tree leaf roller. There are this one uh, that uh, below is or uh, belong to an Acentropinae subfamily, an aquatic cranberry. And a common one that's the uh, first one is a Paraphonix fluctuosalis, and second one is Aetheroscalidalis, painted leaf roller. And uh, below is a uh, species Isocentralis filalis, it's also a common cranberry that we can see. It's Arthurista ilaris. It's a cardam reef roller. It's also plant this Neola marquia cardam bar. And uh, another one is a Daphne, Daphne indica. It's a cucumber mouth that uh, can be seen in Cucurbitaceae family. Uh, it's a, we can see that hairy structure on the below that shows it's a male uh, that for attracting the female and for the mating purpose and for the mission for the attracting for woman. Here one is a Botiates asialis. It's commonly called Asian tea sucker. Because its common name is given, because there are, uh, they, we can see the behavior of one, it can be seen on the body of the cattle and sucking the tears and 
and fluids. Another one is the glyphod bivitralis. It's a common mode that we can see. It's a ficus leaf roller mode, as it's also an osplandus and on ficus. Another one is a paroctis marginata. There are so many paroctis that we can see here, uh, in commonly in hibiscus plant and other malvasy groups. It's a large milk weed snout, commonly caught. Another one is a Euryparus bracteolus. There are other all Euryparus species are also there. And Aritellus derogata. It's a commonly called, commonly called cotton reef roller. It can be seen in Ibiscus thespusia and other plants. And there are other one is a Pygopsilla tyrus. It's a checkered snout. There are another Pygopsilla that we can see here. It's a Pygopsilla costiflexalis that will have in a sun uh, color variation and pattern in, in the region. Another family is a family Drypanidae. There are about worldwide about 950 species have been identified. That the main identification of this family is the four wings have a protruded tips. The four wings have a protruded tips that we can see here. It's a common uh, character that we can see in Drypanidae. And they are feathery or threat like. That mostly have a, mostly that we can see here is a threat like. Uh, that wings are broadly triangular, uh, four wings have a proper tips. Some species have a bipped four wing tip also. That tympanal or organs are uh, present in most almost cases. That proposes absent in some genus that they that they don't feed on other stage. Here we can see as a macrocybis mea is a large broad drooping hook tip. That we can see here is an best uh, one of the best examples for camouflaging. Here we can see two flies sucking the bird poop that may that it will look like that so it's a defense mechanism uh, another one that we can see is a tridiptana phyllata and phalaka vidisara the phalaka vidisara is a common one that we can see even in urban areas but macrocilla and tridiptana can be seen in good habitat another common family herbide that we can see in everywhere it's one of the second largest family about 25,000 species belonging in 18 subfamilies in herbidae, mostly herbidae are also a good pollinators and they are well developed proboscis and uh, the caterpillars have a five pairs of prolex. That's an identification feature that we can, uh, that caterpillars have a five pair of prolex for distinguishing. The tympanal organs are also present. There are some herbidae uh, that belong to subfamily Actinae. They are indicators on a disturbed habitat. And um, I belong that we can see so many actin in urban areas that they are indicating that its habitat is disturbed and uh, its our ecosystem is changing that many are presumed to poisonous to distasteful to predators some secret distasteful yellow fluid from the body that we can see in uh, this this one amerila astreus if you touch them in a hand it will emit an uh, secretious fluid from on the top region from on the edge region uh, that's an, a defense mechanism. It will be distasteful fluid. If any frog or a lizard goes near to them, uh, then it will emit that distasteful fluid uh, as a defense mechanism. That many uh, thorax as earring organs sounds are beyond human hearing and can warn bat or jump their sonar. Then uh, that's uh, mostly one of the diverse species and it has a well developed earring organ. There are some species that feed on plants as well as the lichens. The lichen eating plant, lichen eating adults that we can say lichen as an ozone and habitat indication that adults also can be we can be mentioned on that same category. But these are the common herbida that we can see is an Asota plana, Asota heliconia, Asota cariki, and Asota canariki. It may there are so there are other Asota uh, species also here. I'm just here so you're showing only common one. A sort of plan and a sort of heliconia can be easily distinguished uh, the, by the following markings, even it's in a closed position. But for the sort of karike, it's better to can identify a sort of canarike. It's better to have iron wing region, iron wing region to get it as an asota canarike. There are also other markings here on that region to identify, but it's better to have an iron wing marking. There's another one, Arginastria yellow tiger. It's a common one. Um, it feeds on crotillaria. There's another one, Creotonode transients and Creotonode ganges. That Creotonode ganges uh, is an legu Austin leguminous plant, uh, pea plants, right? 
the as a common mode that we everyone had seen will be olipa species for the identification of species level dissection is needed there will be about four to five species uh, can be had been reported in uh, western ghats region there are another one is a brunia antica is uh, is a male that showing this marking and uh, it's a it's caterpillar feeds on mostly on lichens is another one below is an acuroba sangarida is an acrosantra type of moth is a monotypic genus there is no other another species reported in this genus is another common one that's an basina defecta is a crimson streak darrow moth it's also com uh, there are so many species in barsin genus Uh, but can be distinguished uh, by looking the pollen region markings. There's another one, a uh, common one called Macrobrachis gigas. Macrobrachis gigas has caterpillar that can be seen like an army, like a, long, a large groups uh, swarming in the region. Uh, it, it feeds mostly on the bark and most uh, like like and like, and uh, they does not feed on plants. Uh, so. And they even pupate inside the tree bark, like okay. And another one is a Nictimara colita. It's a common uh, moth that we can see in it. Cyana. There are so many cyana species. Uh, this am is shown here as cyana pula and cyana bayanica. Its identification is ba is based on the curve lines and the four wing uh, four wing uh, ports and curves that shown here. a common uh, moth look like a wasp maybe but these are more uh, first one is amatella amatella salis that's a crimson banded ant maiden that can be still distinguished by this crimson uh, pattern that uh, shown here uh, is amatella salis and another one here is amatella sicia and amatella bisinca amatella sicia is a seven spot and amatella uh, bisinca six spot as its name itself clearly says there's one more spot that we can uh, clearly see here to distinguish the both species another one is a ukrainia polymena is a painted handmaiden uh, these go three of them can be seen commonly in any urban areas but mostly ukrainia polymena can be seen in good habitat so another common moth this a uh, this area only as a great passenger moth so another one moth is undata it's a also fruit pieser moth like eudocima there's a limantria ampla that we can see is i being Wings are look a uh, resting position having this. Uh, th this one is a male that we can surely say because uh, female of Limandria does not have any wings. And then other one commonly Bacillus arcuata is an arcuata passenger moth. Then other common is a Eudocima. It's a Eudocima. Uh, last one is a Eudocima epimista that mostly feeds on grapes. And here one is a Eudocima homina that feeds on pomegranate. that we can here see that labia paths are well clearly visible and well uh, developed in the in these two both fruit facing moths and that's a below one is an ipopera vespotilo it's an spotless owlet moth there are uh, three, uh, herbus species there are four four common herbus species that can be seen uh, herbus macropus is first one that where uh, that the i wing markings and high spot in which position and these white markings are the key identification to its species there are herbus macropus herbus hygroglyphia herbus herbus caprimulus there are so many species uh, and there are also spirana species for the uh, for the species level identification we need dendera dissection and its common owlet moth another family family you throw today when we say about uh, other families it mostly have a wide distribution uh, about in so many it can be seen in almost all continents uh, not in Ar arctic region other we can mostly seen in uh, europe or anywhere but in the case of euphotrochidae it's a distribution restricted to african asian region uh, it's a small family belong as having in a 339 species and in other broadly feather to the tips in males and less feather in females that is a proboscis is a poorly developed that say that shows that that adults does not feed that uh, gets energy from the caterpillar stage and the important thing is that they are also an habitat indicator that uh, they cannot be mostly seen uh, in urban areas only one seen is a eutrota gartnei or eutrota 
Placida are the others that can be seen in urban area. But these are the first one is Euprota lineosa, Euprota mollifera, Euprota data. There are also several Euprota. Uh, identification of Euprota is a difficult one uh, that we, we mostly look for the uh, apex region and markings. And uh, another one is a Ganesta similis, is a leaf monkey moat. It's another family. It is a, one of the la third largest family. It's a geometry that everyone has you know, seen. The, it belongs to about uh, 2,300 there were 2,300 species distributed worldwide, and almost 1,560 species from India. Uh, it's a current uh, available data, but will be more than that. There will be if we are studied properly. Their forewings are triangular in shape. That is an important character for identification of its family level. And the and wing regions are narrower than the forewing region that we can see here the triangular forewing re apex region and high wings are narrow and often most of the, of the geometry they are wavy lines and the, there are some female having uh, some species of winglets and antenna are thread like in most species uh, temple organisms are present legs are scales or brush associated with the same distribution males Geometry are considered as a weak flyers as they are considered as an habitat indicators. Geometry does not show any migration or long, long, long pattern. So, uh, geometry are an habitat indicator in species. They mostly feed on the nectars, uh, but some are uh, exceptional cases uh, that can be seen. In some species, they also feed on tears and blood. Caterpillars usually have two pairs of prolex. That's an important feature to identify the caterpillar uh, to family that it have only two pairs of prolex here we can see a beautiful oropterus marginata that i got from uh Iriki region in Muna. Uh, it can only be mostly can be seen only in good habitat and is an habitat also a habitat indication there are other oropterus species are also there we can see here the triangular shape uh, for wing region then another common of the geometry is Emilia rosalia and Emilia lodosta. Maybe it's look similar, say same species, but it's a, a distinct, it's a different species that we can see is a curved line that uh, showing is an Emilia rosalia and Emilia lodosta have a straight line, and also of the following uh, tip, uh, which is mostly straight here and a little bend here in Emilia lodosta. It's an identification feature. Then another one, uh, Borbaca plagiaria, the common geometry day. Gonodontis plasilina plagiata can only be seen in good habitat area. And abraxas species, there are there are about five to six abrax species commonly seen, but uh, for the species level identification, uh, we need gender idea detection. There's another common geometry day, Iapocris idadria, it's a crescent tip geometry day commonly called as. Another one, Naxa testalis, is a white spotted Naxa. And an Iporita lutea, and here common one Ipositra talaka or called talaka leaf moth. Other geometry that I had shown here can be seen in good ecosystem, but I have seen that Ipositra talaka have an eye adaptation even in urban areas. I have almost seen more than uh, 40 plant species in their caterpillars. Uh, that it is desired adapted to urban area, but others are seen mostly in good ecosystem. There are for there are more than four to five agathia we can see here uh, i already mentioned here two of them there are agathia later uh, that your uh, these lines are the identification uh, border lines are identification for the species and uh, there's a petalian malaria that's another geometry and agathia lysenaria is another jo agathia species that we can easily distinguish by the four wing line by the four wing line and uh, and wing and entering marking. He is here another one commonly uh, common everyone has seen them. That's a Dispania percota, blue tiger moth, and uh, it may look similar, but uh, both are two species. That uh, first one is a Dispania palma area. Some may have yellow region, a local region on the hind wing region, but it's not only ca the character identification. Uh, the four wing have this wavy pattern. And uh, here we can see that it's a mostly co colored, uh, and that's an identification feature. And this fine palmaria, uh, it's not co it's not that much commonly seen in urban areas. It can be seen having having so uh, little much good habitat area. 
and another one from pingasa ruginidae and pingasa clora pingasa it may look similar uh, but it's a two different species and uh, this brown color or dark color is not an identification it can be seen in both species that these lines uh, black lines look more curved in the pingasa clora that's an identified uh, distinguishing character for the species another family called limacodidae this family comprises about 1000 species mostly species are found in foothills uh, that that they are restricted to their habitat and, and this is also an indication species air like air like and bodied antennas are short feathery that tapering towards the tip in male and thread like in females and that limacodidae commonly called as a cup like moth uh, because of it's we can see here that's a freshly eclosed adult one here it's in a cup like structure here uh, in the pupa uh, that shows is an a uh, cup uh, that's why it's called as an a uh, cup moth and the proboscis is reduced or absent mostly the problem uh, proboscis of limacodidae are absent that we commonly see and their blight last like like caterpillars are aggressive sucker and there are another, another common uh, that we term used are slack moth because uh, their caterpillars movement as a slack like stuck a slack like pattern and like slack movement uh, they are highly allergic uh, so never it, it is it may cause allergic to skin if we touch their caterpillars the pupation occurs in hard sporical or oval cocoon may inside the tree bark also they pupate here we can see it's an a really hard cocoon that we can see the common limacodid that we can see is as a mirisa bracteata mirisa argentifera and a caromedia picata The Mirisa bracteata is a silver spotted Mirisa, commonly called uh, because it's a spill, silver spot that you can see here. And Mirisa argentifera, Ceramica picata. That another common one is a Paracelapida, is a coconut slug moth. Uh, South plant is called, it can be seen in Arachisia or coconut palm leaves. Uh, uh, it can be seen in urban areas and commonly it can see, but uh, these three can be seen in good habitat area. Then another family called family Lasio campitae. It's been a good uh, example for uh, camouflaging like a dry leaves. It cannot be easily identified if they are placed in a, in their natural habitat. This family is a small fa family comprised of about thousand five hundred species. They prefer hilly areas and coastal habitats. They are especially habitat indicator. And they are medium size and stout body. The short wing exceptional air moth. That identification feature is uh, that iron wing. regions are circular in shape that we can see in trabala their iron wings are in circular it's an identification feature for to this family that we can be and it's not there are exceptional cases are also there the proboscis mostly reduced or absent that uh, there is a mostly absent the let's again the weak flyers and their habitat specific Here, first one is a gastropaga species, and uh, second one is a trabala species, uh, and the third one, last one is a libido nobilis. Libido nobilis can be seen in uh, com commonly seen in uh, urban areas also, uh, but these three are can be seen only good habitat. Uh, this is first. Uh, this here one is a dendrolema species that I got from the Liambati region. For the species level identification, we need a second. Here we can see the gastropaga that uh, mimic the dry leaves. another family noctidae this is one of the largest family and also that uh, that we have conflict with the human because of uh, it's really most of depending on the our agriculture habitat and uh, agriculture uh, that we are uh, dom uh, plants their larvae belong to the uh, 25000 species can be seen worldwide uh, so uh, antennas are usually thread like and the tympanal organs can be also be seen in uh, abdomen that we can see here the caterpillar of anoctidae that uh, prolac and rolla can be seen here caterpillar shown is a sandor species the timba uh, the noctids are specially adapted they are reg uh, require regular refueling for flight and feed on nectar free sap aphid and it drew sugary dates etc uh, have a complete set of prolegs in caterpillar it's an distinct identification feature for the care fam up to family level that it have a complete set of prolegs comparing to other species just some species are leaf minor stem or leaf borers and other fields and plants shoots also they pupate inside the soil uh, is also an distinguishing character of this family noctidae 
we are another caterpillar that showing is an epistin yes which is noctules are widely distributed or uh, there are some migratory species also uh, that uh, about their migration i will come to uh, after the family discussion uh, they are uh, inducing the vegetative suction that they are come they are the major they are the, one of the major pests that we face in the farming sector the result uh, in one of the major pest farm is a conflict with the human that the common of today that we can see is a chrysotis acuta uh, is a tomato liver uh, that uh, caterpillar feeds on tomato plant as another one is tantor strans for is a the is a okra lupo is another one epistim adalatrix there are also one, one more epistim that we can commonly see epistim macularatrix uh, that feeds on dioscorea plant that's a there's another one noctis uh, is a calopistria melladi it's airy like the fern that we can see there uh, easily distinguish their other legs have an airy, airy structure and they are mostly feeds on their caterpillars feeds on uh, pterid uh, mostly feeds on ferns another common family uh, is a family nolidae so there are about 1400 species is distributed worldwide the mostly small and dull color most uh, with the tufts of raised scales and forewings the caterpillars have an common flagging and colors and tufts of short hairs the caterpillars are mostly uh, easily distinguished identification to family level because of um, some caterpillars are an ed uh, ed are an round shape or a round dome like structure on the ed region uh, that showing it's an cat uh, caterpillar belongs to family nolidae the some caterpillars have retention as stack of molded old the caterpillar head capsule in a horn on the current ed but cocoons are boat shaped and double layered with vertical exit slits are also an a method of pupation pu uh, pupa formation or cocoon formations that can be seen in nolidae can be seen uh, can be seen in common eligomonas uh, mode the sound production is seen in some pupae of nolidae that's also an a defense mechanism uh, if any predators that uh, goes near, near to the pupae it makes some sound these are the common nolidae that we can see the first one is a just a man is super bug that mimicking the bird poop that's what called as the bird dropping nolidae then another one is stelipa celtis and i mark nolidae that uh, that one is eligomenasus elanthus defoliator uh, it's also called as elanthus excelsa another one is a galapa polysiparis red brown nolidae uh, these two can be seen uh, in good habitat area eligomenasus is a common one common one the nolothrip species uh, for the species level identification we need general description and the family noted on today it's about uh, 3800 species is distributed worldwide that are adults of moderate size with stout bodies their body color helps them camouflage with the tree bark and dry leaves they are angry camouflage to their surrounding their habitat they can they cannot be easily identified in their natural habitat and they are beautifully colored the caterpillars are highly modified with the bizarre shape and cryptic pattern like we see in a storopus species uh, having a lobster like a uh, lobster like caterpillars uh, that does not look like an a uh, common lepidoptera caterpillar uh, some caterpillars have a chemical defense like spraying cyanic acid and formic acid it can be say it is a defense method uh, that has uh, reported in only family not not only that if we go to uh, near the some uh, caterpillars of protodonidae that say some uh, uh, formic acid and cyanic acid as a defense mechanism here's a common one that we can uh, not a common one here's the uh, first one is a phalaria species uh, and the second one is a dudusa cynopla and third one storopus pycoti these notodontia are all habitat indicators these uh, first one uh, and this uh, phalaria and the storopus as got from a Uh, idiki region uh, and store uh, due to the sign of the from uh, nilly ambithiria they are highly habitat indicators and one of the thing that i want to say is we can never say uh, that moth will be a fixed uh, range of size i have seen uh, erebus macropus uh, that common almost of a uh, fire fight uh, of about 6 to 7 cm in in urban areas uh, but i when i see, when i go to, when i see them in wild area it was more than uh, 10 to 12 cm uh, uh, its habitat is an important feature uh, in a mid method uh, it will be change very uh, according to their habitat and uh, their color also we get a uh, uh, the mostly some uh, very colorful moths uh, that are seen uh, in common urban area as well dull uh, well dull colored also 
the family sphingidae they are one of the important pollinators and they are about commonly com uh, called as ophmoth they finally comprise about 12000 species as distributed worldwide about more than 200 species are reported in india that narrower four wing and rounded hind wings are the family level identification that we can easily distinguish uh, it's as a up to family level uh, because of the there is no another moth that uh, shows this like structure uh, and the the caterpillar the some species are migratory and they have a long proboscis and they are one of the important pollinators that i had already say when about a proboscis that they are one of the important pollinators when alarmed the caterpillar raise their eggs thing like a posture uh, like a snake like posture that mimicking snake uh, pattern uh, so also in defense mechanism a first one we can see daphne sneri is oleander of moth it will be the common uh, moth uh, that will be seen by everyone and there is a, a similar one also that daphnis hypothecca uh, that is not common that is there is only a few report of them uh, this another one is amblyx species there are so many amblyx uh, the identification is uh, difficult for uh, the identification species level we need uh, gender detection uh, so another one silogram of weights and here one is a clanis species is another beautiful uh, one that uh, amblyptus panopus and a common ipotian species there are several ipotian or ipotian celorio ipotian velox ipotian uh, borovia rosita and it can be easily identified by the hind uh, wing hind wing regions as a marumba dyrus and uh, as a pergus actius it can be commonly seen in urban areas also this one is a macroglossum coritus uh, commonly called as arming boat moth as it uh, in the flying pattern that mimic uh, the arming boat and it is nectar also like uh, coming to arming boat there are about uh, 15 species and one subspecies has been uh, reported uh, during 90s uh, but um, in recent study uh, but uh, uh, by what while looking the recent studies only uh, seven to eight species as we are seen Uh, this one is a macroglossum coritus uh, the species level identification we need both hind wing and for four wing more regions uh, clearly visible and they are the important my uh, pollinators and they are also migratory the family uranidae is also a common family that's a distributed worldwide and more than 650 species that we can see uh, they were tympanal organs are well developed and the proboscis is present Uh, almost all Uranidae you know, have a proboscis, well-developed proboscis. Adults are no, adults are uh, mostly seen in morning also. The caterpillars have a complete prolex uh, that we can see here also uh, that uh, I mentioned all in Noctidae family. Here we can see the Micronia aculeata is a grey spallow-tail moth, and below one uh, is a uh, Fasciata leucosida is a crescent wing Uranidae. These are the common Uranidae that we can see. Another family, Cygnidae. It's a day flying moth, about thousand species uh, that reported worldwide. That adults are brightly colored and many diamond look like a color having a moth, and there are also some uh, look like in color of a butterfly. There are also some butterfly mimicking adults. Uh, There's a bright color, one predators, and they are poisonous. Uh, their body synthesizes hydrogen cyanide in level lethals to small birds. That if they in any small bird uh, catch uh, try to eat them, it will be lethal to them. That cocoons are strong cave. These are the common cygnidae that we can see. First one, Cyclosia, Cyclosia latipennis, and there is another species that is Cyclosia tatlonieris that is seen in uh, North India, northern region. Cyclosia latipennis is restricted distribution in southern region. And another one is Etrusia edia virensis. Is there a slug jewel? There are another family uh, is Epialidae that every the so almost all of them have seen this one, Go, commonly called as a ghost like a ghost moth. uh it's a it's a uh, adults uh, this is not even proboscis uh, that uh, that has different feed that uh, it get energy from the caterpillar it can be seen in the before the monsoon tree uh, monsoon season and there is a large size uh, more than 8 cm uh, more than 6 to 7 cm it will be size uh, this uh, one of epialidae is endoclytes species Uh, there are six to seven species as uh, can be seen in kerala and uh, but we uh, leave them as an endoclytia species uh, because its species level identification is really difficult and we need gender resection 
this another micro lepidoptera that i'm seeing the family tortoise today it would be really less size having comparing size from 2 cm to 5 cm there about uh, there are about 11000 species described it is uh, commonly called as pest uh, wing span is 3 cm less that commonly we can see these are the common tortoise today we can see uh, that's a dodo species uh, it's a uh, feeds on mango tree uh, mango leaves it's another one sorolepha species and uh, homona species and labotra species for the identification of uh, species level uh, tortoise today we need dental resection and i am now speaking about the rearing important that for the identification uh, that we almost uh, 95 or 90 or 95 percent of butterfly are done life cycle uh, comparing in western gut by uh, western gut uh, butterflies of western guts but in the case of moth, only few life cycles are done, and we few like we have only like few data about. So uh, for the rearing is a very important uh, thing to give da get data about their life cycle. There are so many adaptation method that we can see in caterpillars. Uh, so then like, their data is a re doing life cycle is one of the important thing that I am shown here is a Dasicara toitesi that uh, belong to family Herbidae. Uh, that we can see the antenna having bipectinate structure and legs have an airy. And here, look at that uh, pupae uh, is inside the cocoon. And another one, macroglossum, uh, this feeds on more, more in the species. It's a macroglossum particular. Uh, that the tail region we can region. That's so called identification for the family of moth, the sphingidae. Here we can see pupae, uh, pupae inside the soil. There are so many interesting things that we can see in the uh, doing life cycle. It's another common one, Epistema dilatrix, uh, that feeds on Dioscoria. Uh, that uh, moth as a pollinators that I want to mainly say, uh, we, we don't much value the, their ecological significance. When, the, when we say about the pollination, we only say about the uh, bees, uh, but moth play a vital role in pollinating flowers and plants. And visiting more plant species than bees, and most have an all that that most have more uh, plant specific to their pollination also. That some uh, sphingi, some orc moths pollinate on uh, that pollinate on some specific particular orchids and particular flowers, uh, and they and they go they are, and they uh, only they they uh, and they carry more pollen than any bee, the more the more than bees, and they visit more time than bees. And they are uh, so their ecological sequence is really very important there and they play and re, uh, very ecological uh, uh, value. As speaking of the plant population, diverse and abundant. As as they are mold pollinators, um, as they are and they are also some like Simgidae and Ophmos are my, or Noctidae as uh, show some migration pattern. Uh, so it makes more plants healthier. Also and Simgidae Herbidae. Noctidae and geometry, uh, they are the fan. These are the family that play an important role in the pollination. So another, these are we can see that uh, one of the sphingidae uh, for uh, nectar, they long to uh, so the proboscis uh, we need the adapt uh, that need the long proboscis to get the nectar from these long tubes. It's another uh, com that are uh, um, humming mode, humming bird mode, uh, that's an extreme from. Uh, as an, um, that uh, moth can be what why uh, can be also be seen as an environmental indicators. Uh, they can say they play an, a great important role in conserving their microhabitat. With presence of habitat may, absence may be, which is a measure of overall conservation protected areas. But these studies are not done in any uh, year in India or uh, in India. Uh, but uh, we need a lot of studies for uh, saying uh, about their habitat indication. Uh, but we can we can roughly see that undisturbed habitat. Uh, we can see not to don't in an undisturbed habitat. Uh, we cannot see uh, much don't to don't in an urban areas or uh, any other developmental areas. And not to don't is uh, geometry red panada uranide and also euphrotidae are all indicator species. They can also be, they can be seen in good habitat area. Another one is a disturbed uh, is a disturbed habitat indication. Everybody as an indication of a disturbed habitat and also a pyralidae uh, belong to subfamily Pictini. they show an, an habitat of india that uh, uh, they show an indication of a disturbed habitat uh, that migration of moth that when we say 
we know that butterflies um, will migrate. Uh, that we that there is a regular monitoring going for the for the butterfly migration in South uh, South India region. And but uh, moth also migrate, but there is only few studies at done. And there is a fossil record in Denmark about uh, that showing about 1,700 specimen belong to 17 species or something that showing mass migration across sea. That says that even moth migrate across seas and uh, their migration is really important. And then there are some many recent study of uh, noctic moth that many noctic moth migrate in spring from mild weather temperature to explore higher latitude region in summer. Uh, the, the, that example that is a recent study shows that Autographa gamma is an octidae moth that migrate in autumn from North Europe to North Africa in spring uh, in spring and it re-migrate northward. Think about it that how much it will be really long distance from North Europe to North Africa. In, and it spring, in spring, it re-migrated to northward itself. And there are also uh, several reports of migrations of off moth and macroglossum species and Daphne Sneri. There's also a Daphne, uh, Daphne Sneri migration movement uh, that is reported in Japan region. And also in recent, in, last, in 2005, there are about 16 species of uh, moth were collected in East China, sea showing a migration across sea migration across sea. There were the families were there every day and of today, uh, pinky days. But there are there's also an interesting factor is there is also a Plutalidae family. It's a micro lepidoptera that have a size of only about 3.54 centimeter. I don't I can't uh, even imagine that how in a small moth like micro moth like 3.5 centimeter moth can fly across the sea. So that uh, we need to study in our area also. There is also a movement uh, in, and there is also migration show in uh, Kerala and Western Ghat region. Uh, and in, uh, so we have to study. Uh, we don't know uh, any uh, any movement uh, currently now, but we have to study. And because their migration is really important, that we can see it's a climate, small climate changes, and uh, and also it's a really a great benefit to our plant health. It makes uh, the migration makes the plant genetic diversity and makes the plants more healthier. So uh, moth as a predators, that's one of the things that I want to say is, uh, is that uh, it is one of the more important predator, uh, most important predators are insects, spiders, reptiles, amphibians, birds that so many uh, feed, them, feed on them, that caterpillars, uh, that caterpillars are the main food source of many birds, that many insectivorous bats feed on adult moth, uh, during night day, during night I mean. But uh, we can, uh, that we, we have seen that several times that a drone go coil, beaters, microbing like the common bird that may, uh, that may have feeding uh, their caterpillars, uh, that feeding, uh, feed, do not feed caterpillars, as well as pupae and others also feed them. It's a picture that's showing an insectivorous bat catching that are adult. There's also a recent study uh, that we have to know that moth has a uh, significance in our society that uh, Novavax company that used it's a coronavirus vaccine uh, is based on the spike proteins that developed from the moth bowl. So the, the, the research put the genus of the bacterial virus and uh, insect virus uh, to infect moth cells and replicate inside them. These, these moth cells have a spike protein that uh, make this vaccine more powerful and effective. And also light pollution. It, when saying light pollution, uh, we know that uh, light pollution is affecting bats and light pollution is affecting uh, the uh, marine uh, light, light pollution affecting the turtles or marine movements etc. But the light pollution is also drastically affecting uh, more the diversity as well as insect diversity. In the nighttime, environment is being lit and often by broad spectrum lighting and there is growing evidence that artificial light at night has a large consequence for ecosystem. It is a great the decline of the insect diversity is caused due to la light pollution. It caused great decline in moth as well as insect diversity. The recent study in Europe has shown that there are large decline in moth uh, due to the light the pollution. The artificial light at night can also disturb reproduction, larval development, and people diapers, several things. It will affect and it will cause stress to the moth. That it will uh, affect the food plant quality, increase to predation. The more it will cause more predation, and will uh, in the, it will directly decline the moth population. 
the ferrobone production and copulation is reduced and so all activities of both are also affected uh, by light pollution there we can see the eye moss light uh, that how they're affecting uh, here is a common several method of lighting the best one is a fourth one that we can use because uh, because it's not a it's not affecting in upper regions of the light position that pesticide effect uh, it is the second third threat that we face in in the case of moss that most like the throat most like throat tissue the nocti day every day crampy day parallel day as a cause a very serious agriculture damage I don't prefer using term because it is a result of a monoculture farming. Uh, pesticides have a more pesticides are affected more the diversity greatly. That everyone know that pesticide usage are affected or uh, insect diversity greatly, and also moth is also affected. And also uh, habitat destruction and uh, monoculture is also a reason. Thank you. Okay, Th thank you, Mahesh. So now the forum is open for any questions. Any questions you can unmute and ask. So, so if no questions, so the, uh, thank you, Mahesh, for the detailed the description. So he has covered the uh, interesting the facts about moths, okay, the characteristics uh, regarding the different moth the families and how the we can uh, distinguish them, identify them, and also he has given the various the uh, threats the moths are facing, the diversity is uh, the facing. So uh, thank you, Mahesh, for the uh, wonderful session. So. Thank you, thank you all the participants for uh, spend, uh, spending time with us for, and attending in this particular session. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you all.